Ek gesels vanochtend met Benoel Rooi en hy is die stichter en hoofuitvoerende beamte van die Zuid-Afrikaanse Waterkamer. Benoel, welcome to Groot Blaas. Thank you and uh, welcome to your listeners and viewers. Absolutely. It's a new day, new challenges, but also new problem fixing. And we are talking water today. Um, when I do research about you, the word uh, water energy nexus comes up. Uh, can you give me a, an overall explanation? What exactly is this concept? So the, the, everybody's talking about, you know, the food energy uh, nexus, uh, but, it, you know, from a water perspective, for us, um, we, we need water to do, to, to provide it to citizens, but we need, most importantly, we need the energy to actually uh, convey or transfer or pump or get the water from uh, the reserve through the treatment plants mm. and up to uh, the, the, the cities and the likes. So um, without energy, we're unable to, 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 to move water around, but also we're unable to, and there's the dirty partner called sewage, we're mm. unable to get sewage out of our suburbs, our towns and the likes, um, because a lot of our sewage is not gravity. It, it, it's a combination of gravity and pumping. Mm. The pumps need energy. And the sewage plants, like the water treatment plants, are energy intensive and they need it. So there, there's a rule of thumb that it's about 4 to 6 percent of um, a country's energy, generally speaking, globally, is used for water and wastewater uh, treatment and, and conveying and, and delivery. Mm. In South Africa, in certain places, it can be higher because we're actually pumping water all the way from the Tugela into yeah. the integrated Vaal River system. And from um, the Vaal Dam, Rand Water is also pumping purified water over 140 kilometers up to the northwest, Rustenburg and the likes. So the system is energy intensive, so we need to look at water and energy uh, where they intersect, so at the nexus. Mm. And Benoit, obviously, um, where we stand now in the beginning of 2023, still in January, um, the, the thing is that load shedding is playing, still playing the main character. It's on everybody's lips. It affects every part of the sector, the, the, the agriculture sector, the private sector, everybody's affected. So just to bring that in, with your experience, aren't you quite frustrated with the situation? <laughs> Um, I, I think as South Africans, we're somehow getting used to being frustrated. Mm. Uh, you know, one of my big frustrations is that water is a slow onset disaster. Energy is an immediate one. Mm. So, you know, the lights are on or off. Uh, water systems take a while to collapse. They And as we've seen um, with water shedding in some of our metros, mm. it takes quite, quite a bit of time before the reservoirs run empty and the like. So it can take up to a week of load shedding at stage four, between four and six for uh, reservoirs to run dry and the likes. Mm. But it also depends on the weather. So, you know, we've had hot weather in the Western Cape. We've had hot weather in Gauteng. And that exacerbates the situation we see in Rand Waters, um, uh, you know, got issues with, with supply. Uh, it just can't can't keep up because it be, it's been very hot. Yes. So, you know, the frustration is there's no... It, there's no one single cause in all this, but pivotal is that our dams are over 94% full nationally mm. and we don't have water security and energy is in the middle of it. So without energy, we can actually do very little. We, we become an uncivilized society, not decolonized, uncivilized. Mm. And, uh, you know, energy is, is, is the pillar, you know, for everything. Yes, we have alternatives to energy, uh, well, to electricity. Yes. We have various things. But, but not everybody you know, can afford it. <laughs> yeah. Sorry? Not everybody can afford it, the alternatives. That's the problem. And mm. also, if you start talking about these big water schemes, you cannot run them on diesel generators. I'm sorry. And this is why most of Africa doesn't have these schemes, because the economies are diesel generator run, and they've never been able to industrialize. You, you need a network. You need to do that scale. And, um, and, and in South Africa, we have not only, we're in the top 20 at one stage, we're number one in the world with dams, with some of the amount of volume per capita. Mm. So we're really dependent, the economy is dependent on two things, apart from people being there and resources, is it's dependent on water availability and energy. And South Africa, over the last 100 years, has worked hard to do that. Yes. And in the last 30 years, we've worked our way um, out of civilization to a great extent, 
And there are no substitutes, and this is why we, you know, we have to fix it. Yeah. The problem with water is that um, the immediate requirement is that as humans, you know, we need water, mm. um, uh, you, you know, all the time. And you know, after two days, we're, we're sort of expired with tickets. Mm. So you know, it's not it's not an option. Um, so, so I think the the disaster, or the people say there's no crisis, catastrophe. Yes, that that mm. that we face. Is in actually, it's a bit like the pandemic, except there's no vaccine for this. Yes. Is that all the systems are so interconnected that we, you know, it's it's not a matter of we're not going to have internet, we can't have lights, we won't have water. Mm. Soon start backing up in our houses and and the likes. Um, that will close that will close industry down. Um, it'll affect food security. Mm. Farmers, their biggest cost is not the the toll they pay um, national government for abstracting water. It's actually energy. Yeah. And I think it's been fairly well publicised. But we're going to start. It started with the chicken story, um, you know, which is very unfortunate. But we're going to start seeing cold chain storage and agriculture fail. Mm. And um, you know, so without food, well, without energy, there's no food. There's no water. There's no economy. And mm. I don't want to scare people, but, you know, we need to wake South Africans up. As South Africans, we're resilient. Mm. We've adapted over the last three year, 30, 30 years, mm. last three decades, and now it's not working. We need to change direction, and we need to get these priorities right. And only we can do that because the government's a reflection of us in society, mm. and we don't like this, this, this reflection. Mm. So it's for us to change it, and we must hold government accountable and civil service accountable. Mm. Benoit, we, we must... Absolutely keep this conversation going because it's now's the time for it. We just have to take a break quickly. Um, we're going to be back on this now. Benoit, uh, so basically, we 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 did focus on you know, energy plays such an important role, and it's almost as if we we can't stress it enough. I, I, I feel this conversation cannot be held enough, and it's time that. That we talk about it. Don't just talk about the crisis, but talk about the possible solutions, the things that can be done, the knowledge that can be put in. I just want to take a minute here and just bring it back to food security. This is where agriculture obviously plays the biggest role. And um, when I say water is crucial for food security, it's the understatement of the year, right? Yes, so globally, the number is 70 to 80 percent of water demand in a country is for agriculture in food secure countries. Um, our country, we be quite efficient because we've got water scarcity. So we did 61 to 63 mm. percent. So, you know, agriculture is very it's very efficient. Mm. Yes, we use genetics and all the likes because we have a lot of um, uh, issues, problems, not only with water, but with other things. So we're able to grow the best maize in the world, I'm told. Um, the real issue is that farmers globally in food secure areas are supported and subsidized by government mm. because you cannot exist as a civilized society without food, water and energy. Mm. So, so, so food is absolutely crucial. Mm. And, um, you know, in South Africa, our farmers are not subsidized. They're in actual fact um, attacked. They're an easy flogging horse. There's security issues. Mm. There's water issues. There's energy issues. And they've got cold chain storage issues now. Mm. And um, yes. what we need is as a solution, um, I would imagine, and as a country, we need to reprioritize our, our budget allocations. So the first thing is, how do we get food security? It's through energy and water security. So mm -hmm. what we need to do is ensure that the farmers are given renewable energy, for example, and subsidies and the likes, green hydrogen generators and storage capacity so that they can irrigate the crops they need to irrigate mm -hmm. and they can uh, drive the abattoirs with the energy requirements and the cold room storage and the likes, and then reinstate our railways so that we can move those goods um, at an affordable rate. Moving, mm. m moving agriculture by road is just like any commodity, it's just too expensive. Yes. And we see it, you know, no inflation. So government needs to come to the party with our money. It's our money. Government has no money. It's our money we give. But we need to start subsidizing not only energy, but water and, um, 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 you, you know, let's say emergency plans into mm. the food chain so that we do not land up with a situation where we have to import food. Mm. We just don't have the currency reserves to actually do that. We mm. borrow so much money just to pay grants and civil servant salaries mm. and infrastructure. So, so 
we really need government to come to the party with, with, with our money and um, start decentralizing and relieving the Eskom grid mm. of its, its base load um, so that it doesn't have, you know, load shedding. But for that, you know, the entry barriers are very high. And, um, you know, if the crops fail this year, the farmer is unable to spend capital next year. Mm. He, does, he doesn't have the guarantees of the next crop. So he can put in infrastructure to drive his pumps and all the likes in his mm. cold chain. Mm. So, um, yes, and I think, you know, it's also time to stop talking. Yes, we need to raise awareness through the media and, 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 and such likes. Mm. But um, we, we need to have action. Uh, it's got to be know. done, yeah. It's got to be done. And, and, and that's exactly what I'm thinking is it's one thing having this conversation and we, we're still going to have it, I think, for quite a few, quite a long time. But at some point, I believe the frustration will be built up so intensely that people are going to start yelling, stop talking, stop talking, start doing. Who are the people that need to talk to each other? Who needs to come together? I mean, when, when I look at your CV, it's, it's, it's impressive. And I mean, you've got a lifetime of knowledge. So who needs to be part of the discussion to get things done? That's the question on everybody's lips. Yeah, so we've got civil society that's starting to mobilize itself. Mm. Um, we, we've got the trade union movement that's realizing that jobs will disappear very, very quickly. Well, they are disappearing, and but at an accelerated rate. So we've got the unions you're starting to move. Um, I'm not very happy about the politicization of our basic services. So, you know, to me, we're going to see, I think, um, uh, stoppages in the economy where it's going to be stopped for a week at a time or maybe even more. Yeah. We're seeing it in Europe now. It's also starting there for different reasons. Mm. But I think we're going to start seeing a collaboration of depoliticized mass action to hold government, um, a, you know, a, accountable so that we can we can stop this this collapse, mm. because it is a collapse. Mm. Um, it's just the rate is, you know, accelerating. Mm. Uh, so, you know, as the Water Chamber, what we've been doing is we've been very involved in national policy um, and the likes, and we've been very successful in that. But, that, you know, the policies are there. Nothing's being implemented. Yes. And the irony is that implementations at local municipality, which is the least capacitated to sort these things out. If you look at Etiquini, it can't sort itself out out of the mess before the floods. The floods just pushed it over. Mm. Um, you know, so the, the action needs to be done at local government level. And, you know, we, we, we national government can put whatever policies want if local government doesn't do it, and it isn't doing it except in the Western Cape to an extent, mm. we, we land up with these, with these issues. And now you've got these knock-on effects where it's not just load shedding and the likes, mm. it's you cannot go and swim in the sea because of the floaters yeah. and the health risks and all the likes. Mm. And, you know, these are real threats. So, you know, most people stay away, but now tourism employs a lot of people, especially the, let's say, medium to low qualified people mm. which form the, the masses that need to keep their work mm. we can't and and what happens is they move to regions like the western cape um that are full 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 locally and, and with uh, foreign uh, tourists but that doesn't help we need the whole country to be full of tourism and we can't you know we can't attract them so mm. i think we're going to start seeing the frustration in, in rolling mass action we just have to hope that it's peaceful mm. um you know what happened a year and a half ago was not nice it has to be kept peaceful but, um, you know, and, and that's the only way of, I think it's the last resort of holding a government to account is to say we are unhappy mm. and you're going to get this rolling mass action mm. because business associations and the likes, we, we've exhausted all means. And, Benoit, um, I, think, you know, I think me and you, I wish we had another, another hour, but we're going to keep this conversation going. Thank you for your passion and thank you for your knowledge. We'll talk again. Thank you. Don't worry about it. Mensen is kwaad, maar mensen het ook plannen en daar is plannen wat gemaakt kan worden. So ek hoop jy is vandag een planmaker, ek en jy sien mekaar morgen weer.